Good day, traders. This is Rich with some trade station action for today. I've been doing several videos on trade station and how I set it up. I now have over five months of use, and I feel like I have a good understanding of the platform, and I will continue to share what I know and how you might be able to apply some of these little features or tricks or tips whatever you want to call them to your trading. So today I'm just going to focus on one thing and that's going to be the radar screen, which is almost like a watch list or your symbol list or whatever you want to call it. The thing about TradeStation is it's almost tr the radar screen is almost like a scanner and it's really in depth, but and it actually takes a lot of resources, I believe on the computer and during high liquidity events. So uh, what I like to do is minimize everything that comes with the original radar screen. So we'll get that going and try to show you what you need, what you don't need, and how can you adjust. There's so many things you can do with this thing and so many things you can add. It can create a scanner. It can give you alerts. It can signal you. It can put any indicator you want without each actually having a chart. So you can actually put indicators on just price action and not worry about visually taking up space. So it's good in that sense, but depends how many screens you have. And in my case, I have three looking to upgrade to four at least. Um, you know, you need to minimize your space the best you can. So on certain screens, I only have the symbol and price. Uh, in this case, you can see when I opened up the radar screen, I'm just on a new workspace that I have several different options that start with it, which is the interval last net change net percent change bid ask high low volume today which is great so we'll just do good old apple and it'll populate the information pretty much this will be it is a saturday so this is from friday um and it says interval five so it's like, like thinking you're looking at a five minute chart or just a five minute time frame and that's kind of nice to let you know that it's on a five minute and you can change this interval as well um, and it all depends. So if you put, let's say you're watching so many symbols, let's say you're watching 30 for the day. Um, do you really need to know the bid and ask all day long? Do you want the high? Yeah, sure. You want the high, of course, but do you need it on this screen? You can put the high on your level two on your time and sales or other screens or even on your charts. So the best thing I like to do is just kind of minimize, minimize what you need here. And it's very easy to do. You can do it multiple ways. You can hit this add study button. So what I'll do is you can add indicators, paint bar, sh and show me's. And look all these indicators you can add. I mean, it's just insane. You can add this to the radar screen. It's almost like, again, like adding to the chart. So in this case, do I want interval? No, we'll just remove the interval. We'll say, okay. And their interval is gone just like that. So this will allow, so look how much space it needs to take up when you just start out of the gate it's a pretty good square of footage um let me see if i can add other symbols to kind of simplify this i'll just see if i can do a it's like excel spreadsheet so let me see if i can um no so i'll just do this and oh, try to just add more symbols as possible that way um you can get an idea of what I'm looking at here. So we have quite a bit here now. I know it's all Apple, but you get the idea. Uh, that's a lot of space. And that's a lot of numbers, and that's a lot of data flowing through when you're trading. Do you need all these numbers again? No. So I'll go back in here. Last price, yes. You want the last price. Do you want net change? Yeah, I think I like net change and net percent change, sure. Because percent-wise, if a stock is up 0.5%, eh, it's not necessarily in play. But if a stock's up 22%, it's good to know that. Even with the last price, you can kind of figure it out if it's up three points. But a stock might up, might be up 20 cents and be up like 30%. So you don't know about that. So a net percent change is a good number to ask to have. So I'll remove bid, I'll remove ask, I'll remove high, and I'll remove low. I'll keep volume today because I like that as well. And now I'm down to this section here. So I'm down to last net change, net percent change in volume today. So then now I can now move the radar screen over quite a bit more. 
So it gets a little bit better because you can move these columns over as well. So if you have a stock, let's say like Amazon, let's put Amazon here, AMCN, it's hidden, right? So you got to adapt for the uh, prices that your stocks are going to be at. So anywhere from a three, I would say th four digits is fine. Uh, I don't think you're trading Berkshire Hathaway in a day trading format, but you might. Um, but anything over four digits, I think four digits is quite a bit. So four digits here. Now you can create a separate radar screen. So if you include um, NASDAQ or Dow Jones, you will need that fifth digit because those are, you know, Dow Jones is at like 27,000 or whatever it might be at the time. But the big number is going to be volume pretty much. So then you can shrink this down too. And this is all stuff that's pretty common. It's like doing you working on an Excel spreadsheet. And that's the one thing about TradeStation that, you know, I've been, I was a Microsoft guy in my early career. Um, I learned a ton from Microsoft and I was a network engineer with Microsoft. But their platform, their, some of their code is just not the best. So TradeStation decided to use the .NET development program um, for TradeStation. I don't think it's as robust as some of the others. I think it's got some lag in it. And, you know, like E-Trade uses it on their pro platform, which I'm planning to set up. It does use Java. And Java is pretty clean and easy, um, but it's just kind of old school. And as long as it, stay, it remains, it's gonna it's pretty robust and pretty strong. As for like, it's like working with an Excel spreadsheet. You've had issues if you've used Excel. You've had issues with it before. It does what it needs to do. Um, it's just a spreadsheet, so no big deal. Um, so the net percent change, we can reduce that size too. Um, you don't necessarily if this is too big. See how this net percent change is bigger than the percent changes. Um, you know, you just want it to fit. So you probably want enough to show three digits. If you have a stock that's up a thousand percent or more. Eh, I mean, that that's pretty rare. It does happen, um, but uh, you know, I think three digits is is plenty on the front end. So, and then the volume, you definitely want to show at least you know the hundred million level. I haven't seen billion shares, so I would say you know we could see stocks getting like three hundred fifty million shares or something like that. Uh, as you can see, Apple just fits just fine. So then what I like to do if I'm putting up charts and things like that is I'll just sh I'll shrink this down and I can shrink this down, make that plus, see that plus sign right there, kind of shrink down as well and just get to the edge. So now I've reduced enough where I uh, can see a lot more of my screen here and I can put more charts or whatever else I want to put in here. If you just want the symbols, it's pretty easy just to remove all these and just have the symbols and go through them one at a time. Um, you can also, once you have your chart, so what I'll do is, if you see my charts before, um, we'll just create this one over here. Where's that paste window? That's how easy it is. So I'm creating a pretty much a new um, workspace, temporary workspace, and, and it makes it pretty nice to do. And I can switch you know, my linking so we'll go, we'll go to like the Scion, um, and then we'll go into the Scion. So anytime I hit it, it will switch, and it's nice and clean. Um, so again, if I was just looking at the symbols, I can be further down. You know, I can go all, make these really small or remove them. And let's see, I gotta go in here. Not that I, I would just remove them if I'm gonna make it this small, of course. Um, you know. And I can make the chart bigger, which allows you just more visual space. And then you can just hit Amazon here or Apple or whatever stock you have. So if you just want the watch list, that might help you as well. So this pretty much covers up the radar screen. Now there's so much more you can do. The best thing you can do is when you do when I do like that is I can create just a new one. Um, something to always remember if you're making new workspaces and things like that is to always hit file and then save all workspaces and then desktops save all desktops and i'll do a video on workspaces and desktops and there's there's not much to it um that's why i haven't really done that but there's a ton of settings you can do within each uh, radar screen um from time frame you know you can do you can add studies um you, the data you see is also something you can also create what i like to do is 
when I have, you can see on my first page, and we'll go back to my, my original, is I have my indexes or futures. So I have Dow Industrials, NASDAQ, uh, E-minis and NASDAQ minis and um, the SPY. So then I could put in a label, gap plays, right? So my gap plays early morning list, I'll create that. And then I'll create my symbols below there. And then I create another one that's called in play, which are stocks that are in play that day. I don't know why I have this twice. Um, so I'll remove that. And a lot of the stocks I watch, so I use um, constantly. So I just keep them on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then going back to that, that's another thing I want to share with you is if you wanted to create watch lists, lists on the day, so I create this, I can change this to, I can rename it to, let's say, excuse me, Monday. Okay, if I can spell. And then I can create, uh, I can create a new page, right? So the new page I can create for Tuesday. There we go, Tuesday. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then I can also create plays so if i want to create a play on um let's say ev play so electronic vehicles right so we'll go ev which i already have and i could put tesla i could put um now neo is it um, whatever else plug you know all those guys blink and just have a list of all the different stocks that are in that um, field. So EV, I can create COVID plays, I can create you know, software plays. It doesn't matter, you can come up with whatever, anything you want. You, know, you can also consider a favorites, um, the favorite plays, but the more of these you add, the more data it takes is what I'm learning. So I do have it here and I'll show you. I have Tuesday, Wednesday, and I can scroll through Thursday, and Friday so each day has a, my list for that particular day what's kind of nice is if things are slow on Friday I'll go back to Thursday and check out the plays from yesterday or the day before whatever it is and I might be able to find something like this HHMC is from Thursday right so HHMC actually had some setups in it not that I was trading it on Thursday because I didn't need to see a setup but like on Thursday which is here it had a nice gap up hit the 220 here and then rose above the 220 here. So that might've been a pretty good trade yesterday, looking at the Thursday plays into Friday. So this allows me to remember um, what stocks were in play the day before or day, you know, you don't necessarily just need one list. You can create as many as you want. Now, if you talk to trade station uh, support, they'll suggest, you know, not having too many things on your platform. Now they make this thing, you know, huge and so many different options that you should be okay. But just remember if you're having slowness or you're seeing um, lag at certain events when prices are really moving, it might be something to consider to remove that for that particular time. Um, you can always bring it back up later in the day. You can let's say you have a second one created just for individual days, like just a Monday. And then if you feel like it's kind of slowing down that day, you can um, bring up the rest for later. So just something you might wanna think about. Um, I have a lot. I do see slowdowns at those liquidity events, um, but I think that's a little leaning towards my PC, even though it's a good one. I, I keep saying that it's a good PC, um, but I'm not gonna, you know, dig into that too much. Just remember, so this pretty much covers the radar screen for TradeStation. I hope it helps. You know, maybe there's some things that you know you might not have known, but it's it's a fairly simple system. Um, it does a lot more than you really think. And if you want to provide easy language and you want to get into the whole um, auto trading, you can do it all from within the radar screen. And I'll show you in another video, I had a couple of things set up, strategies set up for me to alert me on certain setups and it uses the radar screen and populates data in here. So I don't have to create charts and I don't have to add um, all this extra stuff. But that's a future video. And I hope this helps. So you guys have a good one. Make sure you subscribe and like the channel. Um, and I appreciate all the support. You guys have a good one.